My God, I feel something already happening. How many know we, come on, we're here, but how many know faith can take us here? I said we're here, but faith can take us here. Who's ready to come higher? Who's ready to come higher? You, you may be seated. Say faith. faith. Look at your neighbor and say, I, I need your faith today. I, I mean, it's very important that when we come to the house of God, even if we're hurting, we're still in faith. Because faith makes the preacher change his message. Come on, somebody. I may, I may not have a word for you right now, but your faith will make me switch my sermon. I need some woman with the issue of blood kind of faith in here. When Jesus wasn't even healing, she's like, I'm going to get my miracle. Come on. Is there anybody that, that, that has that kind of bulldog faith? I'm going to get my, my miracle. I'm going to get my word. I'm going to get my, my breakthrough. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. So important that we bring our faith to the table. Because some people are so numb by the pain they've gone through, they don't have faith for their freedom. And it's important that we bring our faith. So not only do we get a breakthrough, but we have enough faith for your breakthrough too. Come on. How many believe that we have great faith tonight? Say faith. And as I was thinking about tonight and I was feeling this out and I, I called Pastor and I, I said I got this message and I really feel like this is something that, that, that's for your ministry. But I want to make sure, you know, there's always an angel of the house. So it's always good to, when you're going to travel, talk to the pastor because he knows more about you than I would ever know. Are you hearing me? Because he's your, he's your angel. He's what God gave you. And I, and I was sharing with him this message. He, he said, yeah, Pastor, that, that's, that's exactly where we're at. And I, th I don't uh, really preach this message everywhere because this is really a word for our church. It's a word that the Lord gave me for our church. And so we're in this season of, as a ministry. But not all ministries qualify for what I'm about to share with you. You have to qualify for different types of words. There's different seasons in the life of a ministry. And there's some seasons of testing, some seasons of trial, some seasons of breakthrough, some seasons of promotion. Seasons change. But this, I believe, is a word for this ministry. And you're, you're headed in, an, in a direction that I think is about to, about to make hell very nervous. And many of you are about to take back so much that was stolen, it's going to be redonkulous. Come on, clap like you're about to take back what that devil stole. And so the title of my message is 2021. The year of God's grace and glory. Somebody say grace, grace. and glory. glory. Tell your neighbor, you need some grace? You need some glory? Well, it's about to hit you. It's about to hit. It's, it's going to hit. And when it hits, you can't stop it. It's like a deluge of the glory of the Lord. Point number one, the Lord gives the undeserved and unearned glory in 2021. In Psalms 84, 11 through 12, it's talking about the house of God, and I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in tents with the wicked. Then he goes on to say, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. So he gives direction and he gives protection. Then the Lord will give grace, say grace, grace. And, glory. and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And then, it, and then it crescendos in verse 12 on how you receive, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Or blessed is the person or the individual that believes that you're the God that gives grace and you're the God that gives glory. Is there anybody here believing that God is going to give you greater grace and give you greater glory? I love teaching on grace because it's, it's, it's unearned. It's undeserved gift from God. It's when God blesses you and you know you didn't deserve it. It's when God hooks you up and you know you didn't do anything to get it. But he just gave it to you because he's a God that gives grace. Somebody say grace. He gives grace to the humble. Grace. He gives ability, stamina, strength, strategy, grace. How many know with a little bit more grace you can do way more than you're doing now? What if God doubled the grace on your life? What if God tripled the grace on this ministry? Put, put, put a triple level of favor. That means you would be able to do things that before it was a struggle and now it's easy because grace kicked in. Somebody ought to shout like you want more grace. 
Shout grace. Grace. I love grace. More grace, Lord. Just give me some more of that good old grace. Amazing grace. And then he said 2021 won't be just the year of grace where you're going to move into undeserved and unearned property. Unearned and undeserved promotion. Unearned and undeserved blessing. Not only are you going to move in that, but it's going to be grace and glory. You're going to get a double whammy. You're going to get double for your trouble. You're going to, come on, slap somebody and say, a double blessing. Some of you really slap somebody. All right, I'm out. I forgot where I'm at. One time I told the brothers, ushers, lock the doors. You know, just preacher jargon, you know. And the one brother, brother locked the door. And poor sister, she's heard, man. And later I found out. I said, man, I, brother, I was just kidding. <laughs> Say glory. glory. The people shouted glory. glory. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. And it means weightiness. Mm. Weighty when you're carrying, you're packing. It means weighty or substantial. It means you're heavy. It means you're dripping with oil. Mm. Not everybody qualifies for heavyweight blessing. God blesses some folk and you can't find them anymore. They ain't ready for glory. Huh? How many want to be a heavyweight? Tell your neighbor 2021, you're going to get heavy. They're giving you a dirty look. Not, not like that. I'm talking an anointing. I'm talking. <laughs> Come on, say heavy, heavy, heavy. I'm going to be packing heavy in 2021. What are you going to be heavy with? I'm going to be heavy with honor. That, mean, that means God's going to honor you. That means, you don't ha you, that means when God honors you, it's a wonderful thing. Because you realize that promotion didn't come from a man. It came from God. And it gives you a confidence knowing you didn't give it to me and you can't take it away. Come on, clap like you're going to walk in some, some heavy honor. Mm. Some heavy splendor. Look at this word. You're going to walk in some, some heavy, heavy power. How many want to move in some more power? You should because sometimes you got devils messing and harassing with your family and your finance and your body and your money. And if the power got turned up, that situation would be turned around because that devil would got to go. Somebody ought to shout power, glory, glory, glory. They brought the, dis the, uh, the, the demon possessed son to the disciples and they couldn't cast them out because they weren't packing enough power. But when they came into contact with Jesus, they had to go. And the whole boy's life changed. His demeanor changed. Their family changed. How many thank God for a church that's packing some power. That you can bring a family or a loved one in here. And the power of God set them free. Y'all ready for this? I feel like that. Y'all ready for me? Uh, uh, remember that? I'm, I'm old school. All right. Glory. Shout Glory. It means heavy honor, heavy splendor, heavy power, heavy wealth. You ought, what? You ain't ready for no, you want to you be broke? The devil is a liar. Tell your neighbor, I'll take your money too. The devil's a liar. Don't, don't get all spiritual on me. God wants to make you wealthy. Oh, man, I got to break. I'm going to preach now. You go, I'm going to break this. I said, God can put an anointing of increase on your life. He can make people bless you that don't even like you. When that anointing of multiplication hits your business, what took 10 years will take six months. I was preaching this in the beginning of the year and... <laughs> And I got under the anointing. I got so far out of the anointing, I started, I started prophesying the mind of God. And the next thing you know, I, sometimes when you're prophesying, you say things. And after you say them, you're like, why did I say that? Because you're saying it under an anointing. And I said, I said God's going to give you some, some of you 
businesses that you didn't build. Million dollar businesses. And I said it. And afterwards, I'm like, did they, did they record that? <laughs> and a week later, one of our leaders comes up. He's smiling. I said, what's up, man? I heard through the grapevine, you got a miracle. You know, church, we got a grapevine. Come on. We don't need social media. We, we got our own grapevine. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So through the grapevine, I heard he got blessed. I, I'm like, what? Well, come to find out, he was given the business, the family's business. It wasn't his family. It was the family business. The, the kids didn't want the business. And so he, they just gave it to him. Five million dollar revenue a year. I said, you better bring your tie, son. Come on, somebody. I mean, then I got real bold, Mark. I'm like, I prophesy more businesses. How many believe that God can give you a business? He can prosper you. He can bless you. You have to qualify for that. Because, it, and I know that's what 2020 was. It was a qualifier. Because when you're tried in the fire, you come out ready for gold. Not just pure as gold. Ready for some gold. Because God knows now you don't have the love of money. You love more me than, than you love me more than money. You tithe, you love me, so I know you won't sell me out. Here's another hundred thousand. Here's another million. Here's another five million. Here's a I, I think I need to preach just more, just because. Every time I feel resistance, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to stay there. Because you've got to be willing for God to prosper financially. And you have to believe God for it. And you've got to trust that money's not evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. It's the chasing of, 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 the, of the money for the wrong purposes. But some of you, God's going to give you an assignment to create wealth in business and if you feel like it's dirty and unclean you'll never fulfill that assignment money is not dirty money is nebulous money is nebulous it's in the hand of whoever is holding it if it's in the hand of the wicked they, pr they promote perversion but if it's in the hand of the righteous they promote the gospel God wants to give this church more money stay right here I might not leave this point you got to break that poverty spirit you got to go after that thing and you got to choke it out you may have been raised in poverty like I was raised in poverty we were so poor we couldn't even pay attention we were poor the poor folk called us poor we grew up on government housing government cheese which was not bad actually It come in bricks like that. We had quesadillas. Then we get that peanut butter from the government. Back in the day, I don't know if they do it now, but back in the day, they gave you a lot of peanut butter. Big can with white label, black letter, peanut butter. And you open that thing up with a, with a can opener. And then they gave you jelly, only one flavor, strawberry. And you open it up, and it was a big can, and you know, you have to do something with it now because, you know, this got to last you a while. So you got to get jars. You got no jar. You got pickle jar, mayonnaise jar. So you just empty them out, clean them up. So now you got jelly tasting like pickle. Come on. Man, I, I can't preach to nobody. Oh, it's all right. I'm going to keep it. I know I'm on something. I can feel it. I've been doing this a long time. Come on. We're going to break something right now because God is saying to you, he's going to hit you heavy. He's going to hit you heavy with some wealth. I remember, we, 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 you know, they give you that bread, you know, the welfare bread. And that bread, you couldn't do anything with that bread. You try to put that old peanut butter on there and, and it was all whole, jelly dripping, come on. So we got smart, Marco. We got tortillas. And we realized, you, you, we make that tortilla hot enough, that peanut butter melt. And there's some jelly, boy, you having a roll like a burrito, boy. Peanut butter and jelly burrito. Other well, little kids having that, you know, remember that nice, that, they used to have that, that Peter Pan, Peter Butter, and they used to have that, that Smuckers. Remember that Smuckers? That's with that jelly and the peanut butter together. 
I remember one time going to the store, Mom, and I looked at that smucker, and I saw the commercial, I said, Mom, I want some smucker. She said, shut up. We can't afford no smucker. <laughs> Other little kids in the school had their little smucker. Man, I had my burrito, peanut butter and jelly. We grew up so poor. When I came to Christ, I thought God wanted me poor. So I had a poverty mentality in the world, and the, and the church put a poverty mentality on me. But God had to set me free from that. And I ain't poor no more. And I ain't never going back. And that's why I can feel it. I can sense it. I can smell it. Don't let your environment, don't let your past, don't let what's in your bank account tell you what you are. You are blessed, favored, and wealthy. Kabod, you're heavy. Somebody ought to clap in here like we're prospering. Clap in here like we're prospering. Clap in here. Clap in here. I don't know who this word is for, but somebody's about to break a cycle of lack and bondage. Somebody's about to kick that poverty spirit out of their home. Somebody give God a shout because there's prosperity in your shout. Somebody say, I'm heavy with authority, heavy with magnificence, heavy fame. That's what God does. He begins to raise you up. He'll make you famous. Never mind. You're not trying to be famous. God makes you famous. You're not trying to promote yourself. God promotes you. You're try not trying like Babylon. We're going to make a name for ourselves. No, our God's kabod. His glory is going to make a name for us. It says when he hits you with kabod, you begin to move in heavy dignity. That's a big word for a lot of people in this room. A lot watching me online. Dignity. Maybe you weren't always a Christian. Maybe you come from a, a hard past. Maybe you did things that you were ashamed of. I wasn't the husband I should have been. I wasn't the wife I should have been. Maybe I wasn't the kid or the son I should have been. I did terrible things in the past that I'm ashamed of. When God hits you with kabod, he gives you dignity. It's like you never did anything wrong. And when you begin to tell your story, people look at you confused like that couldn't be you. Yes, it is me. But God hit me with glory and he gave me dignity. Look, it doesn't stop. It means riches. It means excellence. It means to be renowned. God says, I will arise and have compassion on my church for it is time to give her favor. Yes, it's time to give her graciousness. My appointed time has come. I believe for ministries like Wayworld Outreach and the people of God under the covering, God is moving this ministry into new levels of glory. And you've, you've, he's already done it, but I'm telling you, the future glory of this temple will be greater than the past, says the Lord, and in Jesus' name, and I will bring this people into a place of great peace. Somebody give God a praise like you believe it's true. This is not in my notes, but it's very important, this next statement I'm going to make. If God's going to trust you with glory, make sure you're connected to the house of God. Make sure you're serving. Make sure you're tithing. Make sure you're involved because the glory will never come on you apart from the house of God because the glory comes on Aaron and from Aaron's beard it flows down to the congregation. The anointing and the glory is in the house of God and the more you're connected to God's house, that glory will come upon your house. There is no moving in glory and I'm disconnected from the local church. That's an impossibility because the glory is the presence of God. And the presence of God is always in the house of God. It's the gateway of heaven. And when you and I support, we uphold, we lift up the house of God. We are involved in the house of God. There's no way the glory on God's house is not going to become the glory on your house. Because God will never be outgiven. And if you honor God's house, God will put glory on your house. Somebody give God a praise like you believe it's true today. When the glory shows up, Isaiah chapter 60 
He said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Darkness covers the earth. That's what's happening, what's been happening. Not only darkness, but it's thick darkness. It's over all the people. But the Lord is going to rise upon you. And his glory is going to appear over you. And whole nations will come to your light. And even kings to the brightness of your dawn. Your gates will always stand open. And they will never be shut day or night. So that, come on, I'm preaching, huh? So that men may bring the wealth of the nations, their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish and be ruined. Because when the glory of God shows up, it, 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 it does so many things. Everybody's praying for revival and when it comes, they don't even know the, the, the weight of it. The judgment part of it. The reverence and the fear of God part of it. When the glory of God comes, you ask Ananiah and Sapphira. You see, the glory of God is his goodness. When it hits your life, it brings heaven's results. And if you're on this side of the goodness, you get the blessing. But if you're not on this side... Because you're dealing with power. Now all of a sudden you're moving in different dimensions of power. You're moving on another realm. And those enemies that had authority in this realm. All of a sudden when power increases. The coin is flipped. Glory is also defined as the manifested presence of God. You see, when the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Because the ark of the covenant represented the glory of God. And, and, and David realized, if I can get this ark back to Zion, not only will the house of God be blessed, but every tribe and their family will be blessed and the entire city will be blessed because the glory is in its proper place. That's why the most dangerous thing during the pandemic was to shut the church down. Because you didn't just shut the church down, you took the glory right out of the city. And you, oh yeah. Dangerous stuff. Dangerous stuff. To touch the glory of God. That's why it's always con Oh, this is getting quiet in here. It's always connected to the house of God. And David realized it. And he's like, I got to get the glory out of the enemy's camp. And I got to bring it back to God's house. On the way, the Bible said that David wasn't handling it properly. They weren't carrying it properly. And so because it wasn't carried properly, they put it on an ox cart. When the ox cart hit a ditch in the road, the ark slid and almost fell. And a man named Uzzah reached up, touched it, and the Bible said he exploded like dynamite. And David freaked out. He's like, oh, we're not doing this right. What was supposed to be a blessing just turned into a curse because we're not handling what God's called his glory right. So David went back to research how to handle the glory correctly and so he could bring it back. But in the process, he had to leave it there. And there was a man by the name of Obed-Edom and he's like, why don't you just leave it in my living room? And they rolled it up in the living room. And the next thing you know, old Obed Edom started moving better. Pain in his back gone. His crazy one-eyed dog started seeing right. Come on. His sketchy wife started acting right. His crazy kids started acting right. 
His money that was funny started acting right. Everything got blessed. Word got back to David. David, did you hear? Grapevine, come on. Did you hear? Nah, what is it? Well, Obed Edom. What? He blowing up? What you mean he blowing up? He blowing up. His wife's blessed. His sketch, she was on meth. She ain't on meth no more. But she was smoking that. She ain't smoking that no more. I'm trying to bring it down to here. Come on. His kid's crazy. Ain't crazy no more. Man, he was all sick in his, he ain't sick. He walking around like he's 30. And he's 72. Come on. His one-eyed dog is okay now. And remember, Obed Edom was broke. Yeah. He blessed. His fruits blessed. His everything is blessed. And David's like, uh-oh. Y'all, let's go. Go get that and we'll bring it back. And they learned, they brought it back, and they brought it back, and they brought it back, and they brought it back to the temple, church. Once it got in the temple, they worshiped, they honored God, and the glory flowed, and it hit the 12 tribes of Israel, and then hit the city, and nobody could conquer them, nobody could defeat them, nobody, I don't care how big the army was, because when that glory was there, no devil in hell could block that bless. Somebody ought to shout like we're moving into some... On three, shout glory. One, two, three. Glory. See, that's not how you shout it. You got to shout it out of your spirit and declare it. One, two, three. Glory. One, two, three. Glory. One, two, three. Glory. glory. You see, when that glory is with us, victory and success, you want you, me? Guaranteed. Wow. You know, I, I like to, I'm a, I, I got partners that I do a lot of in the, in, 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 in you know, business and, and the stock market. And, and, and they always say, if somebody says it's guaranteed, don't believe it. Because nothing is actually guaranteed in investments. Some are safer than others, but nothing's guaranteed. But when the glory of God is resting heavy on you, victory is guaranteed. And, and success is guaranteed. Tell your neighbor, victory and success is guaranteed in this endeavor. How many are believing for victory and success? That's why God told Moses, Moses, come on, let's go. And, and God, he said, let's go to the promised land. Let's, let's take it to the next level, Mo. And, and my presence will go with you. And I'm going to give you victory. I'm going to give you blessing. I'm going to give you rest. And then Moses is smart. He's like, no, 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 wait up. If your presence doesn't go with us, don't even bring us up from here. He said, because, because of your presence, your glory don't go. We're not guaranteed to win. And then, and then he says, and he said, so, so please, please show me your glory. And then the Lord said, okay, then I'm going to make all my, my goodness pass before you. And I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I'm going to be gracious, grace, gracious to who I will be gracious to and compassionate on whom I'll be compassionate. What's God saying? He said, okay, I'm going to hit you with some goodness. I'm going to hit you so hard with goodness, you're going to know I'm with you. But when I do hit you, understand people are going to get blessed that you think don't deserve to get blessed. But don't tell me who I can and can't bless. I'm telling you in the next season, some folk are going to get blessed and other folk are going to scratch their head. What just happened? Grace and glory hit that house and they just got elevated. Shout like you believe it's true. Somebody say victory. Success. I'm going to give you a heavy word. Can I give you a heavy word? You see, it's a little while. Psalms 37. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Indeed, you're going to look carefully for them, but you're not going to be able to find them. You see, the meek will inherit the earth, and they're going to delight themselves in the abundance of peace. You see, the wicked, they plot, they plot, they strategize against the just, and they gnash at him with their teeth. This is David. This is David. David knows what he's talking about. He says, but, but the Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. 
You see, when that glory begins to intensify in the house of God, all the plots, plots and strategies and schemings of the devil against the church, against your family, against your life, all that weaponry that he's building, it won't prosper. Because when the glory shows up, it will undo everything the devil did. He could have been, what? Let me go. Let me show you how this works. Let me show you how this works. A drug addict. Messed up. Been a drug addict, he's, say, 40 years old. He'd been a drug addict probably since he was 13, 14. All those years, drugs, everything. Messed up his liver, messed up his body, everything's messed up. It, and, he, and, he, and you get him in a home. And the glory's there. And you're, you're the devil. You, you worked on his mama. You worked on his daddy. You worked on his great grandma and his great. You got that curse in that family for a generation. And you got him right where you want him. And in a moment of the glory, everything you plan, all over. God done right. Turn him out. Turn him into a preacher. Come on, somebody. That's, that's what happens all the time here at our church. But imagine when God hits it. Oh, God. When, when God hits it, that's why you got to be connected. You got to be under the spout where the glory comes out. What's the spout? You're in the spout right now. Yeah, come on. Give God glory. If you believe that his glory is coming on your house. Come on, where's that Obed-Edom anointing? Where's that turn it around anointing? Where's that breakthrough anointing? Come on, everything that's in your house shall be blessed. Everything in your house shall be restored. Everything in your house. Watch me, church. God is going to give you years back. You lost 2020. The devil is a liar. God says redeem the time when his glory shows up. One moment of favor will turn it all around. Give him praise in the house of the Lord. Stand on your feet, please. Please stand on your feet. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. You're going to preach to your neighbor a little bit. Say, neighbor. You got the wrong neighbor. You got to get a neighbor who talks back to you. Come on, you got to find somebody ready, ready to talk back. Say, hey, hey, neighbor. Everything the devil strategized, planned for generations to keep you broke, to keep you under, to keep you down, to hold you back. I'm telling you right now, no man can hold you back. No system can hold you back. No devil can hold you back. No enemy strategy can hold you back. Because when God hits you with glory, come on somebody eye has not seen and ear has not heard and neither has entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him somebody say amen or something I hear it in the spirit uh-huh. I hear it in the spirit right now I hear it loud I hear mockery against you. I, I see smirks, smirks. There's like these smirks like, I knew they weren't going to make it. And I knew they went. And there's laughing at you. And there's joking about you. But God says, no, the joke's on you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you got to laugh at that devil. Tell your neighbor, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. 30 seconds, just laugh my faith at the devil. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Try to rob me. Try to block me. Try to hold my blessing back. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! What you think you're gonna do, devil, when the glory of God? I feel a running spirit. I feel a dancing spirit. Somebody jump. Somebody run! Somebody!
see, I have a nice church. Beautiful building was given to us. We paid for it, but it was a miracle. But my building is nice, but I don't got aisles like this. I don't got big aisles like this. When I say run, jump, some of you are like, oh, you don't realize, some of you going to run right out of cancer. You don't hear me though. Some of you gonna run right out of your broke season. Some of you gonna run right out of your debt. Some of you gonna run right out of depression. Some of you need to jump. Some of you need to clap. Some of you need to shout. And somebody needs to run. One, two, three. kind of services where I got set free from a meth addiction. I, I, I praised my way out, brother. I, I couldn't get free. I had crazy thoughts. I had all these crazy thoughts in my mind. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to dance. I said, what are they going to say? What are they going to think? What are they going to do? And the Lord said, forget about them. They didn't save you. They didn't deliver you. And they ain't going to raise you. Somebody needs to forget about your neighbor. Somebody needs to take about 30 seconds. And somebody, somebody, everybody, go on and give God some praise. Go! Now, can I finish my message? Yes or no? Yes or no? I, I gotta finish this thing. Somebody give God a big shout like you're ready for more. Stay standing. My last point. The Lord gives grace, say grace, and undeserved, unearned. The Lord gives grace and glory, but it must be received by faith and patience that's why Jesus told the disciples didn't I tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God how many believers do I have in the house that's why the scripture says don't be sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what God has promised you and after he endured the Lord gave him the promise. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't you quit. Don't you throw in the towel. You need to trust God and endure. Look at the word endure. It means be steadfast, be unmovable. It means to outlast and outlive every one of your enemies. What does that look like? Coming up, as I was coming up, my, when I got saved, my past, they had a, they wanted to kill me. And my enemies were here. And I, I said, Lord, what about my enemies? And the Lord says, forget about your enemies. I'll take care of all your enemies. You, you, you just need to believe me. You, you need to just keep on trucking. And some of you have enemies. Some enemies because of what you did, mistakes you made failures from your past things like that but God says I'm gonna put grace on you oh Lord help me here I'm gonna put grace on you and what I want you to do is I don't I don't want you looking back at Pharaoh I don't want you looking to the left I don't want you looking to the right I want you to keep your eyes on me keep trusting me keep believing me don't you throw in the towel don't you talk about quitting don't you talk about giving up you got to outlast every hater every devil every liar and every mistake now hold up, because we're about to have a praise party up in here. You ready? All right, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you got to outlast that devil. 
You see, we count those blessed to endure. You have heard of the endurance of Job. And you've seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings. And how the Lord is full of compassion and merciful. You see, the Lord, Job went through struggles. Job went through haters. Job went through battles. Job went through loss. Job went through sickness. Job went through lack. Job went through failure on every level. But you know what Job didn't do? He didn't quit on God. He held on to what God promised. Don't you let go of what God promised. This is your year of grace. This is your year of glory. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the devil does. God gave you a word. God gave you a promise. You gotta hold on, baby, like a pit bull on a pork chop, and I ain't letting go. Now watch. Job. Job. Job went through his struggle. But he didn't quit. He didn't throw in the towel. He didn't back off. He stuck with it. He stuck with it. It reminds me of your pastor. I came here 10 years ago. You were in the other building. And you kept st stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. The, 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 the craziness, owners, haters, liars, people that were brothers weren't really brothers, betrayers, backstabbers, but we stick with it. Why? I got a word. I got a promise. I got a word. I got a promise. I got a word. I got a promise. And God has given you double for all your trouble. That's what God's about to do to the entire church. And if you quit, you don't receive. If you give up, you don't receive. If you bow down, you don't receive. But we are not of those who draw back. We are those who go forward. Do you believe God? And I want you to give him a shout of praise. One, two, one, two, three, go. I need you to, I know you got some Gucci I know some of you got some nice purses so I need you to pick up your nice purse and tell your neighbor because I gotta praise and I gotta get it out how many know sometimes you gotta praise God by faith some people right now you're in a battle right now and it doesn't look like like it doesn't look like this thing's gonna turn around maybe it's your family maybe it's your children maybe it's your body maybe you just got a bad report I want to let you know there's victory in your praise because your praise your declaration of faith that you say to God I don't care what the devil says I don't care what the devil does that's why it's called a sacrifice of praise it's a sacrifice I don't feel it I don't feel it but I'm gonna praise God by faith so let's try it one more time tell your neighbor I gotta praise and I gotta get it out one two one two three go I gotta praise I gotta praise and I gotta let it out
there's about maybe 30 or 40 of you here. I'm not just saying this. This is not, this is not me just saying dance or praise. I'm telling you, this is how you get free. Because you're breaking free from opinions of people. You're breaking free of what people think and say. And, you know, well, you know what they did and you know what she Don't forget about all that. You're going to get your praise on. Are you ready? We're going to do it one more time. And some of you need to get out of the aisle. Some of you need to be up here. I'm telling you, you got to break this thing open. This thing needs to break open. Men's home, women's home, church of God. We need to break this thing open. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, one, two, three. Go. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. Said I took back what he stole from me. Yes, I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. It's under my feet. It's under my feet. It's never it's under my feet. And I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. It's who you're dancing to. You, you see, when, when David, when King David was bringing the ark back, the Bible said he was dancing and he was shouting. And the religious spirit on his wife said, oh my God, I can't believe you're dancing. And he said, girl, you don't understand. My praise brought me out of the desert. My praise brought me from the backside. My praise brought me to dignity. My praise brought me to the palace. And I'm going to get more undignified than this. One more time. One, two, one, two, three, go. Saturday night, all of a sudden, the whole city opens up, and everybody hits the square. It's like a big, like, just like this, big, it's a big thing. And they were dancing. They got, they got hands around each other, and old men with big beards, 
rabbi just dancing like they lost their mind. And I said, why do you guys celebrate? He said, we do this to remind us of our exodus from Egypt. Because when there's praise, there's always an exodus from your Egypt. Praise is your highest declaration of faith. When you begin to use your body to praise God, you're saying to God, I trust you. I believe you. And I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Some of you can't move that well, but just move your foot. Some, some of you can't move that much, but just move some. Do some. Let God know. I'm going to give you praise with my body, with my soul, with my heart, with my everything. Because you're the God who brought me out of Egypt. Can we try it one more time? One more time. Tell your neighbor, are you ready? One, two, one, two, three, go. Go. 